And Reagan had gotten, uh, I don't know if you'd say his start in politics, but certainly influential for his image making was the um, the General Electric theater uh, commercials that he did. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, a scholar, a media scholar calls uh, Ronald Reagan's kind of five minute commercials that would 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 appear in between the halves of these the, these uh, General Electric Theater presentations as the TV's first reality show, uh, which meant, of course, that there was no reality at all. Basically, uh, in the 1950s, uh, when his career as a movie actor was really um, uh, uh, flatter than a pancake, um, he received the job as a corporate spokesman. General Electric uh, hired him to go from facility to facility to give kind of, kind of inspiring pep talks to their employees. They didn't intend the job to be particularly political. He would mostly tell stories about you know his uh, Hollywood years. Um, but he was becoming more and more political. He was becoming more and more right wing. He was making his transition from liberal to conservative, uh, which is you know, another complicated story in itself. But by the end of the 1950s, when he's also hosting their half an hour uh, anthology show, anthology shows were kind of like the Twilight Zone or um, what's the one they have now? Um, Black Mirror? Yeah, like Black Mirror, where there's a kind of a different episode. Uh, They don't have the same actors. They don't have the same characters. Uh, They're like little miniature movies every week. And Ronald Reagan would introduce them. And then he would do these commercials in between. And uh, one of the things uh, he would do is um, General Electric bought him a gorgeous house with all the latest General Electric appliances. And he would kind of show up in his family with his family and his little kids uh, and kind of pretend to be going through their lives with their wonderful home of the future. And that really, uh, much more than his career as a movie star, uh, made him a household figure because it was one of the top rated shows for year after year after year. running for governor. So I think it was the image that people had in their minds was this kind of friendly suburban dad, very much like the kind we saw in, you know, kind of 1950s and 60s sitcoms like Leave it to Beaver. The guy who um, presented an image of the kind of safe, secure world behind the secure white picket fence uh, that was kind of going to fend off all the frightening things that were happening in the world. That was uh, the Ronald Reagan that entered politics in the 1960s. Uh, you spoke about him going around these uh, General Electric factories. Uh, wh- what what political lessons did he learn uh, giving these these sort of talks and speaking to these like workers and things like that? Well, it was very interesting. The guy who was his mentor at General Electric was an influential figure that whose name really doesn't doesn't go down in history, uh, but he. Uh, he was very uh, influential in that his name was Lemuel Bulware. I should, you know, kind of call his name. He was uh, in charge of kind of public relations and also labor relations for General Electric, and he saw those things as absolutely tied together. In order to win, uh, to defeat uh, the union, uh, hopefully to break the electrical union, which was one of the most radical, uh, he really. Uh, developed very sophisticated um, sort of um, uh, public opinion techniques to get blue collar workers to identify with the company as their salvation rather than the union. Uh, And basically was very sophisticated in using things like focus groups and publications and even comic books to teach working class people to think like capitalists, basically teaching uh, working class factory workers to uh, become conservatives. Now, when Ronald Reagan ran for and won the presidency in 1980, which is, by the way, the subject of my next book, which comes out in August, it's called Reagan Land. And you can break some news here, Duncan. It's coming out on August 4th. Uh, there we go. <laughs> he uh, was elected with the Democratic, the defection, again, just like in 1966 for governor, of 
voters that were labeled Reagan Democrats, uh, blue collar workers uh, that basically had been persuaded by Ronald Reagan to think like conservatives. And this was, these were techniques, I argue, that he learned at the feet of this guy, Lemuel Boulware. And uh, these speeches that he began giving to uh, workers at the plants were his workshop. Not only the way, what he said, but uh, as a person who basically was very good at picking up at the cues of his audience of what worked and what didn't, what he heard uh, uh, in return from uh, which arguments work best, which stories work best, which images work best, which tropes work best. Uh, and so by the time he's basically fired for General Electric from becoming too right wing and actually uh, arguing against the interests of the corporation that hired him, for example, um, when it came to uh, arguing against public power plants uh, that GE sold giant turbines for, um, he not only was a dyed in the wool conservative himself, he better than anyone else at the time understood how to speak about conservative values to working class audiences whose loyalties had been formed out of the New Deal for the Democrats.